And I guess while we're over here, uh, we already talked about the little secret that was down here. Um, and there was the cave that apparently you had late in the map that's just kind of a little resource cave that's over here in order to probably both just kind of add more content uh, to the map as well as give the player more access to important resources at the beginning like coal. Mm -hmm. Just quickly changing up the scene is really nice because I could have put it like put this all these resources just on top of this rock right here. Right. But yeah. instead I basically added this little side area where you could just where the scene basically changes and it basically varies up the pacing and the gameplay right. a lot. And it's also another case of, you know, now you have coal blocks that are in the wall that you have to dig up as opposed to just giving them in a chest, um, which for the most part makes it feel more like Minecraft um, and I think yeah. is a good thing. But then we also have talked about the fact that, hey, okay, the updated version of the map actually has coal blocks among the coal rather than just coal ore. Mm -hmm. All right, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, because there were a number of times, oh like, I don't I find it so mind-numbing to dig ores. I mean, even just yeah. like an exploration and tactics, I enjoy lighting up the caves, and then I might dig up some of the iron that I've exposed. <laughs> um, but it's just not something that I enjoy doing. And so, yeah, there were a couple times in the map I'm... where I just, I desperately needed coal. And it was like, okay, I'm going to force myself to dig coal for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and... I don't mind the mining of ores. Right. At least I think a lot of people enjoy really... kind of the repetitiveness. It's relaxing. Yeah, it's it's really relaxing to do that, but kind of how Vex um, used to do that, like Legendary, where there were such huge veins where you could just sit there for like half an hour while watching a YouTube video and just mine away the whole mm -hmm. thing. But here it's you, you just need to keep your attention because it's all these small pockets. Mm -hmm. So it's not that fun to me. And I, even in playtest, when you said that, um, I just did another test for realms. And then I noticed it as well, that it's kind of annoying to mine coal because coal mines so slow and you don't get that much. Right. So it was either adding a fortune pickaxe or doing coal blocks. I kind of like Yeah, I like the coal blocks a lot. And I basically hit them as well to make it more fun while mining because instead of only finding coal ore, you could find like you're mining and you're like, oh, a coal block. Hmm. When is the next mm -hmm. one? Which uh, one is going to be a trap? I yeah. It just, yeah. that variety what, just what, all of a sudden what, makes it fun to mine. Like it's fun to explore. Yeah. Like what could I find? Oh, there's the next one. Could there be another one behind here? Like it kind of gives this sense of anticipation instead of it all being the same. And it also, when you see it, when you see the core for the first time, instead of seeing 20 core blocks in between, it feels less generous at first. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I think it gives a better impression in the long run instead of giving them out, like directly showing them like this. Right. Yeah, so that's cool. I'm glad that that change is there. Um, it makes it so you still have the resources in the world uh, and still have the player kind of like getting the pickaxe, pickaxe out in order to get it, but it turns what was kind of dull and repetitive into a little mini treasure hunt as they're doing it. Mm -hmm. I, see, I see you're really liking the fire. <laughs> I just I want to have light in the video or whatever, and I didn't want to give myself night vision because I like having kind of the natural lighting of the area. So... Did, did you know that coal blocks burn? Yes. You, uh, you know yeah. <laughs> That's another thing that I meant to mention already, which is uh, when there's blazes in the area, then coal blocks also provide an environmental threat. Mm -hmm. That was the problem in uh, Goliath, because I had somewhere at the end, I think I had like uh, veins of coal blocks. <laughs> and uh, yeah, blazes had some fun, and then the whole thing was on fire because it was netherrack. <laughs> So that was literally a sea of fire, sea of flame. Uh -huh. Wink, wink, match, match. Indeed. All right. I don't know if there's anything else to say in this little area. Yeah, small, like small bonus areas. Um, there needs to be like a main reward, and it was stone for this right. one. Right. Was my uh, philosophy. Because with with like a special area, if it. If it's a special area, it kind of needs to have its own special 
reward as well to make it rewarding. Mm -hmm. I think that's important when you change up stuff. Is give up give something special as well. So yeah, it worked. I don't know that I yeah, once again in terms of like observation, I don't know that I had noticed the stone kind of in the ceiling of the area. Uh that suggests what's gonna be in there. Um mm -hmm. but yeah, it was it was a cave, it was something obvious to explore. Some more random loot around here. The gold pickaxes that you gave out, um yeah, throughout were pretty good loot uh in terms of quick spawn or breaker kind of pickaxes. Uh and so that was something that I did like. Um How was the loot? Oh, I like the chest loots. Overall, the chest loots, um, I guess feathers. I so it's basically your dro zombies drop feathers and the spiders drop flints, um, and those are mm -hmm. the I think the only ways that you can get those re resources in this map. Except for there's one piece of gravel in the map that I'm aware of. Um, and so that's another way that you get a, get a flint. Oh yeah. Um, oh, oh yeah, there is. And. Um, that wasn't actually intentional yeah. that there was like only one piece of gravel. <laughs> just kind of happened that way. Yeah, I just forget. I for yeah, I forget about some stuff. Right. I like to have like everything yes. in the map, especially with like, I think for Goliath and another map, Corona or Myriad, where I was like, okay, it's literally everything, every single block accessible in the whole map, except for the dragon. Right. Egg, I think. Um, yeah, and I like that as well because, uh, yeah, there's definitely players who enjoy building certain things, who might want to make redstone contraptions, who might want to do this and that, you know, just kind of like as taking a break from adventuring in a CTM map. And so giving the player all those possible resources that they might want um, is pretty great. And uh, But in any case, yeah, talking about the resources, because of the fact that there's so many more zombies than spiders... Uh, I found that I had tons of feathers and few flint throughout most of the map. Um, and so, like, the feathers in the loot chests, like, I never needed them. Is basically where I was going with it. Most of the other loot was usually pretty good. Stone swords also. I guess I'm kind of an outlier. Like, I enjoyed the Infernizer so much that I almost never used a sword. Um, and so I had, like, an entire chest full of swords at the end that I never used. Uh, but I saw a lot of other people playing the map who were using swords as a weapon, so that's fine. That's just me. Mm -hmm. What I ended up doing with uh, the infinizers, I use I've been, I most of the times have two or three weapons, like melee weapons on right. my bar, and I basically have a quick one with knockback, which is the infinizer, right. and then I have like a sword or an axe, right. and I kind of expect people to switch between the infinizer to set be set mobs on fire and then. Oh yeah, that's this is, <laughs> and then um, and then finish them off with the sword while they take like five right. damage. Right, and that could have been a good thing for me to do, uh, but I just I enjoyed the infernizer so much that I used it way too much. And then yeah, it was also the case, especially at the beginning of the map, that uh, using up stone swords and stone axes, um, it was kind of hard to justify when stone was still hard to come by. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, the very beginning of this map, I feel like the difficulty curve is it's kind of high at the beginning. Um, after a couple of dungeons, the difficulty goes down and people kind of like are more in some decent gear and uh, in good shape. And then it does ramp up again, uh, kind of towards the end of the map. Um, it's kind of my impression of it. I don't know uh, what other people thought of the map uh, in terms of how the difficulty progression went. Yeah, it kind of starts really high at the beginning and then kind of goes down until you like stabilize yourself with resources mm -hmm. and then get like backup gear and I think pre ops and um, yep. travel dogs set up yep. as well. And then um, at the end, it's meant to kind of shoot up near the Palace of mm -hmm. Ordeal. And then Dragon's Exile was at first like a resource area where you would basically gear up for the final challenge. That was basically the idea. Because I still like those go all out yes. areas at the end of a map. And like you just got into having quite a lot of iron when you got into Dragon's Exile. So just going directly into the Palace of Ordeal would be like, what if the player dies three times? Yeah, then they're going to have a better <laughs> time. 
Um, yeah, that's another thing with open world style in general. I feel like it's often the case that you have to keep the, um, I don't know, inventory, technology, armor, whatever progression pretty low in like the whole first half of the map because people can choose to do things out of order and uh, kind of like not completely blow the difficulty curve uh, mm -hmm. away. And I've, yeah, mentioned it in a video or two, like this would be an interesting map to go back and speed run now that I know where all the loot is and how to like quickly, <laughs> quickly tech up uh, by taking advantage of different secrets and things. Mm -hmm. Um. It's mainly, uh, at least in my opinion, in my experience with uh, these kind of maps, it's mainly the armor you have to worry yeah. about. And mainly on top of that is protection is the most dangerous. Yes. Thing. And I think, I, I think there's only like two I protection please... books that I found in chests in the entire map. Yes. I'm really yep. stingy uh, with that. And yeah, I think that's a good thing. I've, I've, I've been doing uh, a lot of. Uh, tests with how armor mm -hmm. works and um, I, I saw basically with like full protection uh, iron armor that's like uh, you're just seeing how the armor balance works with protection and just normal armor and there are basically two big jumps with armor and it's one with prote protection and the second one is going from iron to yeah diamonds. now that it has the armor toughness because if you want, um, you need like a full set of uh, protection free iron armor, is basically the same as um, full diamonds, just regular diamonds. Right. So that's already like, whoa. So just being careful with giving out too many diamonds for armor is, is already like one of the dangerous right. things. Um, yeah, so I like the way that this map played out for the most part in terms of the armor. Um, you got occasional bits of chain armor. There was plenty of leather kind of like early on in the map uh, to uh, kit yourself out with if you needed to. And yeah, then, you know, the iron kind of like came over time um, or, you know, <laughs> could come quickly if you happen to find some secrets early on. And... <laughs> Yeah, and then the books, yeah, like I said, there was hardly any protection books, so you couldn't make yourself too overpowered just by using books and anvils, um, and so you really were reliant on the materials, and the materials, for the most part, really didn't start kicking in much until until late in the map. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. uh, one of the emeralds uh, is hidden right out here. Um, and so this one was also, as people were kind of steered into this corner from the outset, made it easy to find as kind of a first emerald. This was, yeah, that first emerald is always meant to be just right. obvious, like, hey, this is what you're looking for right. kind of thing. Yep, it's a way to explain to the player uh, what the emerald loot boxes are going to be without having to write in a book, the emerald loot boxes are going to look like this or something. Um, and then there mm -hmm. was also, it's visible from the monument, and it might be visible from the starting area, I can't remember, um, the one over by the lava waterfall over there. Did you also notice that the, um, in like previous maps, in all my previous maps, the emerald boxes were actually made of emerald blocks? But since the emerald block is needed for the monument, I changed it. I see, to the, to the green. Yeah, I mean, obviously the there's new concrete. colors. There's concrete and concrete powder, which you use deliberately uh, in this map now that we have new color blocks. Um, so, yeah, that was, I thought that might be the motivation that caused you to change it as opposed to the fact that it was a monument block. Mm -hmm. No, it was mainly okay, the, the block um, aspect. Yeah, because previously block. it was just yeah putting the numbered emeralds in the chest. And, okay, I've seen... I found 10 emeralds. I've seen that there's one that I didn't find. So ten. there's at least 11. How many emeralds are there? Um, I think 12. That... There's some there's some map in the spawn chunk. So this is the map I of see. the whole map. And uh, there are green crosses on it. Basically, that's where the right. treasure map actually came from. It's literally just so. I see. That, I cool. Think. And um, yeah, I think there are 12, so we could look have a look at that to see where they all okay. are. Okay, at some point, or just kind of as we're going through the map. I'm curious, I never went uh, kind of below ground right here. Uh, I see there's some command blocks underneath the monument, as well as underneath the starting area. Um, but I presume the rest are in spawn chunks far to the north? Yes. 
the yeah the, the monument stuff is under the monuments and the death counter is under the stuff. Okay. And actually to keep keep it more respective to right. the little And yeah, then other than some honey pots that I see down here spawning some monsters. Um yeah, there aren't any other kind of unexpected things underground. Should we head over to dungeon number one next? Sure thing. So the entrance to this, let's see, this is Dodge Stone Cave. So there was Dodge Stone uh, Cave, and then there was Dungeon 7 was what? Dodge B? B burn? B, B. Uh -huh. Your halt? Oh, yeah. yeah. Dodge, Dodge Burn. Was it also a Dodge Burn Cave? I don't remember. And yeah, is this kind of like a uh, Wild West Dodge as a city kind of reference, or...? Just a funny name, mm. or it's mainly a reference to the terrain. Um, you kind of see these boulders that I started to use. That's something I took from Breath of the Wild as well. It's um, where terrain was really bland, mm -hmm. like only the dunes. Yeah, right, you had those right. in the desert, and then when you have right. trees on top, like the uh -huh. dead trees, that already kind of spruces things up. But adding the, all these rocks around just adds a whole nother layer of gameplay and of just visuals to it because it's something mm -hmm. different. If we, and a lot of I'm maps... gonna go back up above ground really quick. If we go above ground, I guess it's the case. Yeah, even over here, that some of the some of the rocks or boulders or whatever are kind of like made of sandstone and kind of the normal terrain, and then others of them are kind of like a different block. Uh, that makes it look more like, I don't know, like a meteorite or something like that. Um, I think for me, when they were kind of the same material as the terrain around them, like the sandstone ones, like I didn't really think of them so much as boulders or something. Um, yeah, that's probably a small, small design. Right. I mean, obviously you're constrained by Minecraft possibilities as well, but. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think they still work out but yeah the idea was is that you're dodging basically the terrain itself because for first dungeon this is kind of a horrible to navigate terrain with all the different rocks and all these ledges basically that um, exists mm -hmm. in the dungeon so you first go down this thing and then you basically have this kind of small zigzag mm -hmm. My idea is kind of was to kind of go, tell the player like, hey, you need to kind of go around, dodge the train a bit, and then you see the big overlook, which I, I yeah. you know, <laughs> big fish does into trains, and it, it gives. Um, oh, you can't see the chest from here. Ooh. Oh, I, I maybe need to make that more obvious. I see. Yeah. Um... But it ba it basically gives a like a way to say like, hey, you can go over here. Because there is a chest right between those two. Yeah, I just right flew a little bit closer and I could see it. So we're just out of range. Um, and yeah, so yeah, I didn't see the chest as kind of a motivation in terms of going over there. But I, you know, knew the overlooks that you like to do. And it also, it just kind of gives a sense of the scope. Um, because when you're above ground, it's not obvious. Uh, I, I don't think I ever checked my Y coordinate or whatever, like to know how large of a space there could potentially be underground. And um yeah kind of didn't pay attention to how far i'd kind of walked in from the lava lake or whatever and so this gives a sense of the scope of what dungeons can be like in this map still mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then i like the fact that if people didn't go to that island and get an infernizer um here we are in dungeon number one and it's like right at the beginning chest you can't miss and then we have a second yep. one. Yep, and so this one actually had some sharpness on it. Um, and yeah, and then the nether rack, which is also good because you might not have much in the way of torches supply yet. And so if you wanted to do permanent light sources, you could obviously use the mending flint and steel along with the nether rack as your light sources in the dungeon at slightly more risk because you might be setting yourself on fire as you run through your own fires. Yes. Or if you die, you might have your items go up in the fire. Did I... I think I, this doesn't work for some Trying to do reason. something with witches? Oh, uh, why? Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Like, that now works. No, it doesn't. 
Like the, um, you see now they're purple, yes. right? The potion. Yeah, sometimes that's basically me changing like the 45 second poison to 50 okay. seconds. And sometimes it just doesn't work for some reason. Like for some people it does and for some people it doesn't. And that kind of really breaks the map, the 45 right. second poison. Just because with s such a low amount of food. Right, it basically that ensures that you're going to be down at half a heart. Um, and also vulnerable for a long period of time. So basically you have command blocks that are trying to do something to reduce the witch poison, but it doesn't always work. Mm -hmm. I need to have a look um, at that. Yeah. I remember encountering some weird things when I was trying to change thrown potions in the fly as well, but it's been a while since I've done any command block stuff in that general area. Oh yeah, but... Oh no, I guess we could talk about that later as well, about potions. Um, yeah, so this kind of just snaked on through, um, basic creepers and dodging <laughs> creepers and zombie spawners, uh, throughout the dungeon, kind of usual stuff. There was a thing hidden over here in the lava that I missed, um, where basically it's kind of harder to come through this way, but once you get to the other side, you can come through the other way in order to find this chest. Yeah. This one actually, this one was meant to be hard to find because it's like a mending book and a fortune two. Well, a fortune two right. is not that good. But mending, it's like the mending. <sighs> mending in theory is really good. In practice, in this map, like I had three mending books, and I don't think the only thing I ended up putting it on was a diamond chest plate that I accidentally enchanted with thorns, and so it needed mending so that it wouldn't just disappear in no time mm -hmm. flat. But I never had. I never had anything that it was worth putting mending on in like the first two thirds of the map. Yeah, that's because there are not that many like really high enchanted weapons right. in this one. And so, like, I don't know. That's like in each in each dungeon. There's a uh, I, I I don't think you know. There's one key item in every dungeon. Trend. Okay. Yes, in all the eight items, there's like a key. Uh, key item except for the last two ones just to skill up the loot a bit at the end of the map i see um yeah i didn't particularly notice that and i know it's because um in at least one or two of the dungeons yeah i ended up missing it um yeah and yeah the mending thing was more of an observation you know rather than just kind of a criticism um and yeah obviously if you had you know one protection two book and it found iron early in the map that you could spend on an iron chest plate with protection two or something like it, w it would totally be worth it um mm -hmm. i was i was thinking of giving out um books with uh, protection one efficiency one uh sharpness one and power one all in right. the same book so it's basically choose like your own adventure Pick your... <laughs> I was about to pick your poison, but it's the other mm -hmm. way around. But yeah, the protection one might still be overpowered, even. Yeah, most people probably go for the protection one. But once you have, like, two protection ones, mm -hmm. and you get a third one, that's like, ooh, yeah, I will probably use that for something else then. Could be. Like, will you, will you still use it for protection, or will you go for sharpness? I guess that could be interesting for like right. grading stuff. In general, we've talked a little bit offline about uh, basically, rather than giving the player specific loot, giving them choices. You can do it either with uh, kind of currency and trading systems. You can do it with books where you can only choose to put the book on one thing or another thing. Um, there's a few different ways that basically, yeah, you can even add your own like crafting recipes um, for different things if you want to go that direction. But basically ways to give the player loot that isn't kind of specific loot, but loot that gives the player choices of what they want to turn it into. Mm -hmm. Currency works really well with um, maps that are just larger, kind of like legendary, where there are a lot of places to go and there are a lot mm -hmm. of chests. That would be like a good uh, thing to do, because even when you're going through that map, you're quite a lot of the times you're like, oh, okay. Like... Uh, Thanks, but it right. really needs kind of thing because there's so much. There are only so many different yes. things. Yes, and that's yeah, that's one of my main criticisms of all the large maps that I see, um, is that either they have so, they're so big and so they need chests so that it's actually like you feel like you're doing anything or making any progress or being incentivized to explore it all uh, through the bigness, 
Um, and then if you have all those chests, it's like, what are you going to put in them? And it's either redundant stuff that doesn't help the player because they already have that technology, um, or you do something like a currency system so that every little bit incrementally gets you towards one nice thing. Um, mm -hmm. That started to happen uh, with Myriad uh, as well, because you have these standard uh, chain and iron mm -hmm. chests with like a chain and iron armor. And you had like chain, you had uh, like three sets of chain armor, in, like one chest or two sets, I think. And that would get pretty old as well after a while when you do that area quite late. So it's like, oh, <laughs> thanks. Not thanks. Yeah. So yeah, giving out currency instead is probably better for big maps like that. So in this dungeon, there's a gas spawner. Um, it does a couple yes. of things. One, it communicates how you're going to kind of like display gas spawners in the future, because I think all the gas spawners in the map were kind of between these sea lanterns like this. Mm -hmm. That's basically to make up for the uh, the model is right. now smaller. Right, the case that they're I, I really like, I like, I kind of like the big model because it kind of shows um, like, oh, here is your right. big threat. I understand it both ways. Big like big the Enderman, like when it was scaled to the model size, like the Enderman would stick out of the uh, mob spawner as well. And so it made it so you like couldn't hide Enderman spawners and different things. And so there's kind of trade-offs both ways. But yeah, it's very easy for a map maker to communicate spawners from a distance if they want to. And you did it very well in this map in the case of the gas spawners like that. Yeah, and also the um, the uh, what you call it? super spawners, I think you call it. Right, the ones in the nether that uh, spawn a variety of different types of mobs. Mm -hmm. That's also one of those things. Or basically enlarge the spawner to right. see where it is. Um, yeah, the gas spawner I think took some people by surprise, and this is one of the few other places where I don't know. It's it's interesting because it feels like it's... it feels like for the first dungeon that's kind of mean. Um, that's. But people, oh, people overreact yes. with ghasts. Like they're not that dangerous, and that's that is the thing with. Lu By the way, look at how long it takes. I did not realize that it was such a that, long spin. That up was time. like a minute okay. or two. Yeah, no, I I did yeah. that on yeah. purpose as well. This one is mainly to just scare you and say like, oh, this is what you yep. got yourself into. But yeah, long. since the player doesn't have a bow and arrow at this point. Um, yeah, you either reflect the fireball or you just somehow play a game of avoidance. Um, it's definitely constructed such a way with the pillar here that basically the only place it can spawn is kind of like in this one little area right in front. Um, and obviously with the low spin-up time or whatever, it means that there's probably unlikely to be more than one or two gas in here unless the player is doing a really bad job. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was definitely a good kind of like jump scare and it's like, hey, guess what? This map is not going to be super easy. Mm -hmm. I think, like in most LPs I've seen, they all they always had one one gas flying around. And let's see, yeah, the wall was visible. You know, like once you kind of like turn this main corner into the hallway, and so your objective was very clear. And I forget, was there? Oh yeah, there was the chest over here that we kind of glanced at earlier. Um, but it, it had pretty good supplies for just kind of, you know. You might be run out of torches. You might not have a shield yet. Um, this is a really nice chest, you know, because you have all the leather. You have quite a, you have a, few, a bit of food, all the torches. You have the shield. So all the leather, 